Hey man, you still trying to figure out the difference between a two track and a multi track? <laughs> it's easy, man. Come on in here. Let me show you something. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne, and I'm here to help you out with your recording, mixing, home studio setup, and all that, man. And today, we got a popular question that I know I get all the time, especially from y'all who are requesting my mixing services, because one of the questions I ask is, is your mix a two-track or a multi-track? And sometimes, we don't know the difference between that, but it's cool. I don't expect you to know everything. Wavy Wayne got you. Make sure you go ahead and hit a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already because I post videos like this every week and, you know, sometimes even multiple times a week, all right? <laughs> and I want to do a reminder real quick. I do have a giveaway going on for Norman TLM 102 with Beatopia. So if you want to win that mic valued at over $700, enter right now. And that contest ends May 31st. 2020 so make sure you go ahead and enter that right now details are in the description basically a two track and a multi-track are very different i'm gonna start off by just explaining the differences and then we'll take a look at it in a session okay so when, when i say two track i'm talking about a stereo file of a beat and it's called a two track because there's technically two tracks blended into one the left channel audio and the right channel audio okay so it's a two track audio file uh, most of the times if you just downloaded a beat like a wave file or an mp3 file you got it off youtube or beat stars or something like that or maybe you got this um, beat sent to you in an email from the producer whatever if you only have one file right one stereo file then that would be considered a two track a full multi-track session has uh tracks in it for every element of that instrumental so the kick would have have its own track the snare the piano the synthesizers the banjo the cowbell definitely the cowbell will have its own track okay so everything in that mix will have its own track sometimes uh, artists will start off recording to a two track beat or stereo beat in a session and then later decided they want to get the full mix and have a full multi-track mix session going on now also in this video today i'm going to show y'all how we can actually merge those those two uh, to bring a multi-track in to a two-track session. It's not as easy as y'all think. Well, it's pretty easy, but y'all are a lot of times missing a step that causes timing problems. So I want to make sure that if you are out there merging your multi-track sessions into your two-track sessions, that you do it right. So um, let's just go ahead and jump into Pro Tools because this is where I'm going to be doing this demonstration. But if you use any other DAW, this stuff will definitely apply the techniques will apply so let's go ahead and get into my session so right now what we are looking at is a two track session with vocals okay the beat is just this one stereo track at the top where all the information and look like is distorted and all that because i'm zoomed in on them but um where all of the information for the whole beat is right within this track now i'm not gonna play this because this is a mix that i'm currently working on for a client and i don't want to get this video copyright strike the none of that like that this is a two-track session um the, there are no separate tracks for each element of the beat so the problem with this is that if i want to get more punch out of my kick or if i need to eq that piano so that it fits in there better um i don't have that control now there are some techniques that i can use to enhance this two track but the full control is gone and if you want to learn some of those exact techniques that i use and that my mentor adam long uses we have a full master class in the wavy seals elite right now that you can just join the wavy seals elite and then actually access the full master class on working with a two track and enhancing it in a mix but we're not going to get into that right now but there are some ways that we can enhance this but full control is gone if i just want to turn up the cowbell i can't do that if i just want to get more hi-hat i can't do that here um yeah of course i can put an eq on and affect certain frequencies and do all these other different stuff but the full control is gone if i needed to create a drop i can't do that i can't just drop it out a certain section to where only the piano is playing so 
the two track really limits um, what you can do within the mix. And ultimately what we end up doing is just, um, you know, we do what we can to the two track, but what we do is end up trying to fit the vocals to match in with the two track. And so it's kind of like uh, if you if you t baking a cake, right, and you left out the sugar in the cake, and so your, your, your cake ain't really sugary. Um, bad ex example. <laughs> Let's say that you, you cooking some chicken, right? And instead of putting some salt in the chicken before you cooking and getting it all in there, you just want to put the salt on top after the chicken is done. Well, then when you bite into the chicken, it ain't really got that deep salty flavor. Like it ain't really cooked all up in there. So that's kind of what's happening when you are working with a two track. Now, don't get me wrong. If the beat is mixed spectacularly um, and sometimes you get a beat that's mixed pretty good. Some producers are pretty good at mixing their beats, but most of the time they mix the beat by itself and it's just the beat. Um, and they they don't leave any room for the vocals so we got to do all kind of tricks and stuff to try to make room for those vocals or make that vocal fit in and you might end up doing something to the vocals to make it match the beat that you wouldn't have had to do if you had the full multi-track so working with the full multi-track definitely gives you a better advantage on making sure that the record is cohesive and that everything gels together so Again, I'm stuck here with this two track, but luckily for this session, the client did actually send me a multi track. Uh, so now, after I've already worked on this, he's sitting up saying, you know what, let's go ahead and do the full multi track mix. So, <clears throat> what I need to do is bring the multi track files into this session. Now, again, I keep, I'm saying you can't just import them. So many times people will uh, just import the multi tracks and then start rocking out, and then they notice that there's a timing difference, right? Even if you just export the two track and export the multi track from the same DAW, sometimes there might be a time difference. Maybe the selection range was different. Something could have been different. And a lot of times I just noticed that the stereo file of the beat is often, um, after you import it in the Pro Tools, the, the start point is different than the multi track. So we're gonna need to make sure that we line those up. So let me show you how I would do this technique and, and then start to mix the multi track into this session and then i can ultimately get rid of this two track but first i'm going to make sure i keep that two track in here because you need to use it as a reference so i'm going to go ahead now and i'm just going to use import audio and it's good that I, i'm doing this um also make sure that you got the 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 beat track selected because wherever you import these files that's where they're going to land um, right after the last uh, track that you have selected. So they're going to be right next to the track that you have selected. So I'm just going to go ahead. I got that track selected, the beat track. I want all the new beat files to fall in right up under that. And so I'm just going to hit shift command I. That's the shortcut for importing audio in Pro Tools. And boom. So here's the uh, here's the file of the beat out the dark. Um, and I like this producer, man. This producer has even put the key and the BPM on the uh, file folder. Wow. I, that's probably the first time that I actually seen the key. Probably not the first time, but it's, it's very rare for the producer to put the key of the beat in there uh, in the in the title on the file folder. Um, but a lot of times they will have the beats per minute, which is good, too. So um, I, I love this producer already. Hopefully the quality of the files are just as good as his naming. So once I open up this folder, you can see that I got all kind of files in here. I got a sample. I got a file for the piano, guitar, the pad, the synth bass, all of that kick, snare, hi-hats, all of that. So I just want to go ahead and let's just select all of these files. And we're going to convert them over to be in our session because they are at 44.1 and of course my session sample rate is at 48 kilohertz <laughs> nothing less baby so we're gonna go ahead and hit done those files are gonna convert and then get imported over into my session What's up, y'all? I am actually shooting a YouTube video right now, and I got a couple more that I'm gonna do today. If there's something specific that you wanna see, let me know right here, right now. Leave a go ahead, drop it right here. Let me know, I might get to it today, too. All right, so it took a little minute to process all of those files and get them saved and converted. And now we're gonna go ahead and import them into a new track. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay here. 
and magically all of my new tracks appear. And another thing about this too, working with this multi-track, you see that um, that they're all stereo files. Now, I do not work with stereo files, and you can also see that a lot of these tracks, you can barely even see anything. So ultimately, these ain't real, true multi-tracks. These are what we would call stems. And the difference between the stems and the multi-track is that the producer has exported these not at full level, but he's exported at whatever level they were at when they were already in the mix. So that reduces the quality and the dynamic range possibilities of each one of these instruments that are looking really tiny. Now, of course, I can zoom zoom in and see if there's something on there but some of those files have been saved extremely quietly um but that's just the producer's you know problem is not a huge deal and i can probably still get a great sound out of this but i would much rather prefer producers out there if you listen to artists make sure y'all tell y'all producers to send all of the files at full level I will do the mixing. You will do the mixing. If you're an engineer, let them know. Let you mix it. Don't send me files that are already hella quiet and, you know, basically nothing. I can't even see. If I go down to the main audio, I can't even see anything on here. So we don't want files like this. We definitely want full multi-tracks uh, that are at full level, just like everything was recorded, like the hottest level that it needs to be, okay, the, the main level. Now that I've got up off my soapbox, let's go ahead and see how we can work with this anyway. Because engineering, you got to be finding problems. And then I also see that this multi-track was not the full length of the beat itself which is not a big problem because i can see that uh the beat was probably short and the client already before he sent it to me he just copied and pasted the two track a couple of times to make sure that it was the full length that he needed so that's cool i can replicate those same exact uh edits and that's probably what you're gonna have to do if they did any drops or anything like that and now you got the multi-track you're gonna have to go ahead and um duplicate the edits that were made already so the way I like to line this up is I'll typically use the kick because obviously you can see that the transients on here are a lot sharper and cleaner versus trying to pick this pad. I'm good on trying to use the pad. So what I will do now is just go ahead and create a clip group. I like to use a clip group to keep all of these clips in line. And actually, let's just go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna hold the shift key and use semicolon. Semicolon will actually allow, as you see, my selection to go down. And holding shift just extends that selection. If that is not working for you using that shortcut, make sure that this uh, AZ button is turned on. This is the command focus button right here. It allows one key shortcuts like using P and semicolon to move your selection up and down. So now that I got all these tracks selected, I'm going to go ahead and create a clip group, command option G. Um, if you don't have uh, the clip group feature in your DAW, then switch and use Pro Tools. <laughs> But let's just get in here and see. Now, this newly imported files is what I want to move to line up to this two track. I'm using this two track as my guide because the client already recorded his vocals to that two track. I don't want to move the two track to match the multi track because then my vocals will still be out of time. I want to move the newly imported multi track to make sure that it matches up with the two track. Now, I might not have to move it at all, but I need to check to make sure um, before I just start mixing this and get rid of my two track boom and as we see these are the same files but we can see right now that the kick right here um the kick in the multi-track is way off from the kick in the two track now a lot of times like i said clients will just rock with that and it will be totally wrong and they don't know why the the sound is sounding like it's off um it's because you just imported a multi-track um in here and got rid of the two track not taking account that small timing difference now this one is a huge timing difference and this will automatically make this song sound off right so i'm using this uh kick i'm just gonna line it up here so um i'm just gonna I like to work in grid mode, so I'm going to just hold the command key down so I can move this uh, freely. And if you notice, since I am using a clip group, all of the clips in this multi-track are moving together. So I'm just going to move it up to where I can line it up. And then I'm going to click and then zoom in. And each level that I zoom in, I want to get more and more accurate until I feel that I am exactly uh, lined up perfectly. 
Now, how will you know if you're lined up perfectly? Well, there's a little test that we can do. The little test is that if you click at one point, you just find a point, and at this point, you see I'm using this little uh, uh, transient. I'm using this zero crossing point where the transient meets that line right there. I'm using that as my reference point on as far as this where this kick is at. And then if I hold the shift key and hit the semicolon again, that will bring uh, that cursor down on both of these tracks so now i can see if they're cutting through at the same point and it looks like my kick my multi-track needs to come back just another hair so in this case i'm actually going to use the nudge feature since it's going to be so small i'm gonna go down to samples and i'm gonna nudge this by like two samples and then to nudge i'm just gonna hit the plus key on the keyboard nudge it back and then let's check it again that may have done it Yeah, I think that will do it. Yeah, that looks pretty lined up to me. And so let's just double check again at another point down here. Make sure everything is still lined up. Okay, so yeah, that, that looks a little different, but it's cool because I know it's okay if it looks a little bit different because the, uh, keep in mind that I'm just looking at a single kick track right here, just one single instrument. And up here in my two track, it has all of the instruments. So it's the pad and the bass and everything is going on here. So the transients may look a little bit different, but that is going to be the closest that I can get it is lined up pretty much as close as it needs to be. Another test that, that you can do it is, is go with whatever instrument plays first and then just bring that up. If you notice, I'm, I'm bringing it up so it's right next to the two track. And I'm just gonna zoom in at the beginning here and just make sure that the starting points are exactly the same. And if you see, my starting points are exactly the same. Right at the, the grid line here, we get that little drop off to start that transient and the same thing is happening on my two track. We get the drop off to start the transient. So um, now I can be confident that this two track is matching my multi-track so now i just got to figure out where the client did the edits and then duplicate those and then i'm ready to mix and then when i do start mixing i of course will go ahead and make this track inactive or mute it or something like that so that i'm not worrying about it playing at the same time because obviously i don't need the two track anymore now that i have the multi-track all right, child. So I hope you found that this video was helpful. Um, knowing what the difference between a two track and a multi track is crucial is definitely a question that I get just about every single day. So uh, I hope it helped a lot of y'all. And then also taking it a step further and knowing how we can merge those two together is going to be super helpful for all you engineers out here. Or if you just producing your, yourself, you recording yourself. Once you get those multi tracks after you've already recorded to the two track, you can't just import it. It's not not just to set it and forget it you actually need to do some work to make sure that it is lined up properly all right so if you got more questions about this go ahead and join the community the wavy seals and if you want even more like hands-on 101 or the full multi-class on working with a two track in a mix make sure you join the wavy seals elite i got that information down in the description as well if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe. Don't be a freeloader on my content. If you ain't already hit the like button, hit the like button. And uh, yeah, man, I'll see y'all next time. Be dope.